Oh, what's going on everybody it's carmine from barmine tech and in today's video i'm going to show you how to make your own surveillance camera system using a raspberry pi zero or you can use a raspberry pi three or four whichever ones too but today we're going to be working with the pi zero we have a little uh ardu cam it's one of the little ribbon cams that just plug right into the port right over here on the raspberry pi See, it's one of those little ones. And when we're all done, we'll have a system like this. And I know the camera angle is really bad, but here we go. You can see, there I am. And uh, yeah, so we'll have a camera system just like this when we're all set. So let's get right into it. So getting started, we are going to need a couple things. We're going to need a Raspberry Pi, whether you're using a Pi Zero, a Pi 3, or Pi 4. You're going to need one of those. You're going to need some sort of uh, micro SD to USB. Whether it's going to be one of these full size ones so you could put it in the side or it might be one of the little ones that just slide in. You're going to need a micro SD card. I recommend getting a better one. Maybe go to Best Buy or whoever your local electronics retailer is and get like a SanDisk. I think it's class 10 is the higher quality and I would get at least a 32 gigabyte one because we are going to be saving your camera footage on there so you don't want to you know, have no disk space to save video on. And a couple things just to make life easier if you are using a Pi Zero. They make these dongles, so this is a micro USB to USB one. And then they make the micro HDMI to HDMI. So you can just plug both these into the Pi Zero and then you can get them on a monitor and plug a keyboard into it. So if you're gonna be using the Pi Zero, it does make it a lot easier. You can set the Wi-Fi settings through the Raspberry Pi imager, but it's like a 50-50 chance that it works and I actually had an issue with it on this project. But we'll get into that more when we get to that step. But that's pretty much everything we're going to need, so let's get started putting it together. Alright, so the first thing before we do everything is we got to grab the Motion iOS software. So if I'll have links below if you want to look at your own, there is the GitHub project. And I'll have a link to this that you can get it. Uh, you're going to come over here to the Motion iOS uh, repo. And over here I'll have the releases. So this project isn't supported anymore, but it's still in use. And looking around, this seems to be the most popular surveillance program to use on Raspberry Pi. So... I would just keep using this until it completely fails. So if we scroll down through all of the releases, we want to grab, we want to grab the Motion Eye OS Raspberry Pi 202-00606. Um, this was released on June 6, 2020. The Raspberry Pi includes the Raspberry Pi A, Raspberry Pi Zero, Raspberry Pi Zero Two, I believe, and the Raspberry Pi like 3A, 2A boards. So this is the version we're going to be using. Don't get confused with like the Orange Pi Zero because that's not the right version. The project creator actually made all the distros based on the different architecture of the boards. So the Raspberry Pi would cover all of them. There was actually a release at one point that had it all broken out nicely, but the program's not supported, so it's not really broken down nicely anymore. There's a little bit of description of what the recent change window was, but we're going to download that version. That's what we're going to be flashing. So after you get that downloaded, and it's going to download into a zip. So I have a folder of all my ISO images that I use, so I just like to do it this way. So it's going to download into a archive. So you can just either open it up with WinRAR, or you can just extract here. You can see here's the motion eye image. So you could just right click extract here, and then you would have your image. So it's gonna be a .img file, which is fine because we're gonna be able to flash that over onto the micro SD card. You could just come over here and with the new, the latest version of Imager, they changed the most stuff. So you could either put this as no filter in or you could just ignore it, I believe. And then you would come over here to choose OS. And typically I like to erase my SD cards first just to make sure everything is gone. So I'm just gonna erase everything on here. Make sure you select the right um, storage device when you go to do this because you don't want to select, you know, like an external hard drive you have on here or anything else and accidentally erase everything. So we'll let this erase real quick and then we'll be right back. So now this is all done and then we can come over here now and we can flash the new image. So we're going to come over to custom and then you're going to select your custom image. So I'm going to select my latest version. Now if you're using for a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, make sure you select the version for the that board so if it's raspberry pi 4 it'll specify in the file so make sure you get the right one we'll click storage and we're going to just go through now a couple things i figured out while doing this testing um you can't configure the lan on this it just doesn't work it puts the kernel into a panic and just it just keeps going into a reboot session 
So don't configure the wireless LAN. You're actually going to do that manually when you get in. Other than that, you could turn on SSH if you want, um, and then that's really it. You can set the host name, you can set a username and password, but that would be all that, and then you're good to flash it. So after you do flash the image onto the disk, there is one more thing you have to do. Since we can't set the Wi-Fi through the Raspberry Pi Imager, it just doesn't seem to like it with Motion Eye OS, you need to just add a file to it. So here's just a quick little guide on it, but you just need to open up the disk in File Explorer, and you're going to click on, I'll show you. Okay, right, so you might need to mess with it and unplug your USB to micro SD reader, but you can open up the file and here you're just going to right click and you're going to do new and then you're going to do text document. You're going to do regular text document and then we're just going to name it based off what it says over here. So we think we just need to name it like WPA to config. So you just need to name it WPA supplicant.conf. So we're just going to come back into here. We're going to rename this. Actually, we're going to select all of it. Make sure you take out the TXT too. And you're going to need to have file names on. So if you don't and you're on Windows, you could do view. And um, it's going to be check off file name extension. So you can see that as well because then you're going to have a hard time changing this. It won't work right. And we're just going to come back here and we're going to grab this info. And we're going to come back to that. We're going to edit the file. You'd paste it in. It would update it with your information. So if you're in the U.S., you would put your U.S. in the country. And other than that, you would put your name of your Wi-Fi network and the Wi-Fi password in here. Make sure it matches up because it is case sensitive. So make sure your Wi-Fi is right and your password is so we can sign on. After that, we're all good to take the SD card out, put it in the Raspberry Pi, and get started on the first boot. Now, this is where it might get a little tricky because it hopefully will connect right. By adding that file, it should no issue, but if it doesn't and it starts looping, you don't see it coming online in your network prop and your network list on your router, you might want to plug it into a display. That's why that micro HDMI to HDMI will come in handy, so then you can put it on a screen and see what's going on. I had the issue with this last night because it just kept looping through because I tried setting the Wi-Fi off of the... Raspberry Pi Imager, but I'm thinking that this was a press project's a few years old and that feature wasn't around yet, so that's why it probably still wants the WPA file added. And that's how it sets it up because that's how you used to do it back then when this project was uh, around. They didn't have that option to set the Wi Fi like that, so you had to actually add the file and do it manually. It was really annoying, it never worked right back then, but it looks like it's working good on this project. Um, if your Raspberry Pi does come up, then you're all set and you'll be able to go to the web page. You'll see it in the list of all your network clients on your router, or you can use Angry IP and do a quick network scan. Uh, I'll show you that really quick too, um, but yeah, it's a really good way. It scans in a few seconds and finds all your hosts, so let's do that real quick. So Angry IP scanner is just a quick network scanner. You just type in your network range. Um, so we just do it over here, and you just hit start and it just scans everything through really quick like i said it probably takes less than a minute and it pulls up all your information so you could have it so here you go you can see my motion eye is here on dot 95 so if you're not able to access your router is like admin portal to see or it's not coming up you can find it right through there so now i know dot 95 is motion eye this is how we used to have to do it all the time before they added the wi-fi settings to the raspberry pi imager you would have to sit here and keep scanning your network because it, if the host didn't come online right away, but it was like showing up, you would have to do it through here. It was such a hassle. I'm so glad they changed this on the Raspberry Pi Imager. So now that the host is all set, we're going to want to make sure that our camera is connected and the Raspberry Pi is up. So you're going to want to connect your camera, whether it's one of the USB ones or one of the ribbon cables. Um, you're just going to plug it into the Raspberry Pi and then get going from there. If you have any issues, um, just check that the cable is seated right. Um, well, USB is pretty straightforward, but with the ribbon cable, it's kind of tricky. There should be like a black or blue plastic on the back of the camera ribbon, and that's going to face away from the camera. So like if we're working with this Pi Zero, you can see this is the top of the board. The ribbon, the black ribbon label should be coming off the back, and then uh, it will plug in right there. And then it just has these little tabs. So you just pull these tabs out. I actually broke them off of this while I was trying to set this project up. But you pull the tabs out, you insert it, and then you just kind of close them. And it closes in nicely. And it's the same thing on a Raspberry Pi 3. The options are very similar on a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. So on these full-size boards, they actually have two of these ports. So there's one over here. And then there's one over here as well. And it's the same idea. The tabs just kind of pull out. 
It's uh, it's a little different because they pull up, and then you would just seat it, and then you would just push it down. So just be careful you don't pull too hard and break the tabs off because then you can't use that port. But there's two of them on the Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s, the full-size boards. So now, when you connect it and get online, everything should show up, so let's go take a look. So we can see that here we are, and my camera is working. This is on the other one I was working on. You can see it's, it's running right now. If your camera is not coming up, then check the seating of your ribbon cable because that could be the issue. But here we are, and now you should have everything working. Um, to access this web page, it is just going to be whatever your uh, IP address is, and it uses port 80. So you could just go 192.168.50. And this is for me, if your network's a 10 network or it runs like a 192.168.1, it's whatever you're going to be. But you just do that. And since, you know, HTTP, uh, since 80 is the common port, we can just do it that way. Your default password is going to, uh, the default username is just admin and it's no password. But for me, I already changed it, so it's going to be admin and my password. It would log in, and probably the first thing you want to, want to do is to change the password. So you're going to come over to the hamburger menu over here, and you're going to click that. And in here, you could change your password. And we could do some other stuff too. So we're just going to go through some of the basic settings that I changed for my camera. I have a very simple, like $12 camera I got off Amazon. It's like a 30 FPS camera. It's not a very high quality, but it's going to work for what I want to do. So that's what we're going to do. It. So I came over and I limited the frames to 30 just so it doesn't go too crazy. I changed the host name. So it's motion. I'm um, in the default config. When you flash the OS onto it, it's a little different. So I just made it. So it's something simple. You want to change the password and then you could change the username um, for another user account. I didn't do that. I just changed the admin because that's the one I'm going to be using. You can check for software updates. I don't know if they're going to be there. You could shut down and reboot the system and you could also back up your config and restore it if you needed to. So that's really nice to have. In here you can connect your Wi-Fi. You need to change networks. You can do it that way. We have services, so we do have different services running. So we have an FTP server, we have the you know Samba server, we have stuff like that. So if you want to move your stuff over to a different machine, or you want to be able to FTP it off, we can do it that way. We have the SSH running, which is good, so you can SSH into the box. We have some expert settings that we're probably just going to leave default because I don't really want to mess with them. They're set for the Raspberry Pi Zero, and that's how I want to do it because I want it to work. We're just going to close that back up. Now we have web video, so we can, this is the one thing I really changed, so you can change your frame rate, so I did it to match my camera, and you could also change the resolution. I'm running in a really low resolution because I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero. It has very little memory, and it doesn't have good onboard graphics. So we're using this so I can actually have decent video. So you can see, it's pretty responsive. If I raise my hand, it's only a slight delay. Um, you can see like my mouse moving, it works. I want my camera to be able to work because I want to be able to see. So that's why I'm going to leave that at that. I tried changing some other res other resolutions because I do have a higher quality camera, but the Raspberry Pi just can't handle it, which is okay. If you're using a Pi 3 or a Pi 4, it'll probably handle it better and you can be able to change your resolution. But for me, this works. You can change where it stores files, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just keep it default and it'll tell you, you know, how you're using your disk space up so you can move stuff off if you need. There's the text overlay, which just gives the timestamp and the camera name, so that's okay. You can scale up the text if you want. One thing to keep in mind, uh, just to be aware of when you're going through these options, for whatever reason, every time you open up one of these boxes, it checks it off to turn it on. So if you turn on one of these other boxes by mistake, just make sure you turn it back off. So like video streaming, I just have the same thing. You could have 30 for, uh, a cap it at 30 frames, which is what I did. Uh, you could increase the quality if you want, but I'm just going to leave it how it is right now. There's also different links based off of what you want to do, which is pretty cool that they built this in. So you could have like an embedded URL, so you can embed it in a site or I don't know, an email if you wanted. There's the streaming URL. So if you want to just be able to watch the cameras, you know, here it is just the camera. So this is good. If you're like out of the house, you only have one camera, you could just tunnel in really quick, pull up this link and here now I can see what's going on. There's also a snapshot URL. So we just open that up and here we go. Here's a picture. So it's just gonna take a picture. Uh, it's a good picture. 
Uh, but yeah, so you just do that. We turn that back off. Uh, we're going to close that box back up. We're going to leave that on because we want to be able to see the video. Now you can see I just opened up still images and it turned it on. So you turn that back off. And you can notice when I do something, the apply box comes up. So I open that up and now the apply box is open. There's movies. Uh, I don't want to do that. We're going to turn that off too. And then there's motion detection. So you can have it set so it only does it when there's motion detected. Depends on how you want to do it. Like you're going to use it for like a real security camera. You probably don't want to record 24-7, so motion detection would be helpful, but I'm going to turn this off because I'm actually going to have this over my fish tank so I can see my fish when I'm out of town. Make sure everything's okay in the tank. So, I don't want motion detection on, I want the camera to run all the time. So, we're all set here. Uh, you can either scroll back up, you can clear out the changes. Uh, actually, no, sorry. This actually removes the camera, we don't want to do that, or you can apply it. So, I'm just going to close that, and here we go, now we have all of our settings changed. So that was how we set up MotionEye. Like I said, MotionEye is just a OS that somebody built off the Raspbian distro or the Raspberry Pi Lite distro. Um, it works very smoothly from what it seems. I know my buddy Nova Spirit Tech, he told me about this a couple years ago. So I've actually had this project on my radar for a while. I just really never had to use for it. Now I do. So this is why I built it up. Um, there's tons of cases on Thingiverse if you 3D print that could support all the different Raspberry Pi models with a camera. And the different model cameras depends on what you want to get or if you want to have like the stock case like the, i'm pretty sure the raspberry pi zero with the canon kit the case actually came with the hole for the camera for the lid so if you still have that original case you could use that or you can print one up or you could probably just buy a new one there's tons of different raspberry pi kits on amazon or the local stores and you can probably find them all over really if you just google a little bit but you can put that together and then you can just tuck it away and then there's your little camera so, like, I'm going to use it to monitor my fish while I'm out of town so I can keep an eye and make sure everything's okay. But, you know, if you want to do it to keep an eye on your pet or maybe, you know, your desk, whatever it is, this would work as a great project. It's super simple. The Raspberry Pi is such a little small form factor. I mean, it's, like, that big. So, you know, it's just going to tuck there. It'll be good. Nobody would even notice it. And it doesn't use a lot of power. It's not loud. It just it works out good all around. So, it's a really nice little project if you're looking for a little camera to do some simple... You know some simple recording or you know simple keep an eye on things um thank you everybody for watching i do have a discord server i'll have a link below and i'll have all the links below i'll have a link to motion eye i'll have a link to any of the guys that i found online and uh yeah i have the discord server if you want to join that so yeah all the links will be below i appreciate everybody for watching and i'll see you in the next video